I'm a fossil hunter and sometimes think of myself as a mammoth hunter and had a good find this year, a big tusk and a matching skull and wanted to share that with you. So here's the tusk. It fell out of the frozen ice and landed in the creek. You can see I'm still wet. I'm getting it out of the creek bottom, I'm trying to move it. It's 200 pounds. I hunt all over the interior rivers, and this is an area that looks promising, a frozen, silty cliff. I'm traveling long distances and uh, cover basically the whole interior of Alaska. So I got lucky, and in the same area where I found the tusk, I found a skull. I'm pretty sure it's the skull from the same mammoth that weighs about 400 pounds. And you could see the opening spinal hole here, and my whole arm can fit down in through that hole. So glaciers are receding at a faster rate, exposing more and more of the uh, Pleistocene age, about 50,000 years ago, debris. Off in the distance there is a cliff of silt that got left behind when the glacier melted. I've been doing this about 40 years now, and I feel blessed to live a life that's like Indiana Jones. Here are some photographs of past finds before the days of the digital camera. And here is some of the permafrost melting. And you could see what's falling down. It's very dangerous. A lot of it is moving and shifting. And of course, the more it moves and shifts, the more I find here is an ice lens that fell down in the river. Here's an interesting series of pictures of matching tusks and an entire skull and matching tusks that I was unable to retrieve. I had to look at them, take pictures, and walk away. I should mention here, I suppose, there is a legal aspect to fossil hunting, and there are areas where I don't have the landowner's permission to leave the land with fossils, and this area happens to be in a park. In Alaska, the landowner has to have mineral rights, and that's what fossils fall under. And so this includes uh, Indian land, mining claims, old homesteads, and other types of land like this, but for sure not a federal park. In Alaska, it's arguable whether the state or the federal government controls the waterways. So a tusk like this that's sitting in the water is um, potentially salvageable. It's best to know exactly whose land you're on, and a lot of this remote land is not marked, so one of the abilities a person has to have, which takes many, many years, is to know the river, know who owns what land, and to get that permission that's required. This is a nice matching set in skull I had to walk away from. A lot of landowners don't want people to know they have fossils on their property, so this ends up being a catch-22. You have permission and you can't talk about it. So this is one reason why this is very rare footage and not very many people have got footage like this. There aren't a lot of people who uh, professionally look for fossils because of all the legality and knowledge you have to have over the river and the ability to go out remote and be safe. This is um, silt, a quicksand almost that I'm showing you. You put your foot in and it, it you stick and here is the um, cliffs giving way, uh, mud sliding down the ice lens that can bury you, bury the boat. It's constantly moving and shifting and you never know what's going to come out. It might be a fossil, it might be a hunk of wood, and uh, it's just sitting and watching can be very interesting. Sometimes big hunks of cliffs the size of houses break away and fall down, a lot like this section here about to come down. So it's incredibly dangerous, and here I am trying to get this dang skull the heck out of there and away from all the dangerous area out of that quicksand. And I had to build a 
sledge and that sledge broke and I spent two days moving at 100 feet one inch at a time it was a fairly bad experience that pole I would cry with I would crank on the winch and get pressure on it and then walk back through the mud and pry with a pole to move it one inch and walk back to the winch again and two days going back and forth in the mud and the danger trying to get this 400 pound skull out so I finally get it in the boat and I'm somewhat safe I've been out in the wilderness a month I've been 300 miles in the wilderness living off the land and it's time to head home it's a very long trip back it's fall it's very beautiful I've got to work my way out of a slough get to the main river connect one river to another river and uh, face basically you can see here what I run into going out and coming back here's an ice lens in the 80 degrees and there's the ice and here's nice fall colors here's the specially built boat running 115 horses on a boat rated for a 40 horse it's not safe but I can travel over a thousand miles without having to buy gas and here 30 miles an hour doesn't sound very fast but look at these log jams and the speed I have to go by them without running into any logs Blood waters followed by fast water drop is what I'm looking for when I'm fossil hunting because this exposes a lot of fossils that washed out of the ice during high water. And here the quick water drop shows this is all silt. The water dropped at least five feet in three days. I've been living subsistence off the land for three weeks. I haven't seen another boat. I finally get to Ninana and I'm dropping my fossils off at the museum so they can be put on display and shared with the rest of the world. Decide to use my four-wheeler cart to get this heavy skull up into the museum up the wheelchair ramp using the, the four-wheeler cart and you can see we maneuver our way in and uh, the manager of the shop is able to lift the 400 pounds. He's a football player, a weightlifter. You could see he's struggling and getting it out of there. And um, the, the shop is a really good, uh, uh, it's a cultural museum, and there are uh, gifts for sale, native crafts and stuff. If you're ever in Nenan, Alaska, it's a good place to stop and visit. I've got my own artwork and my books and stuff like that for sale here in this shop. I've been bringing um, displays to the museum for a lot of years now, and these are some of the things I've brought from the past. Um, I've got pieces of tusk and bones and ribs, and all kinds of cool things. I found a few exciting things over the years. There's a big bison skull here coming up that I found one year that was killed by a saber-tooth cat that's four foot between the horns. That was pretty exciting. Here's a, what the ivory looks like polished. And here is just old stuff, the blue ivory. Most of these fossils have to be prepared, dried properly. That's why there's clamps on some of this material. And this is the tools I use to preserve and that's all on display showing how that's done at the museum how to preserve fossils with little write-ups about what everything is and how to take care of it fossil hunting ends up being an entire lifestyle and I call it subsistence and I hope you enjoyed and learned something from this footage that I'm sharing with you